Hi, Cross. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Hi, this is Falco from Comunda. Hi, Falco. Hi, Kathy. Hi, yeah. Hey, Kathy. This is Maurice. Hi, Hi Maurice. I'm yes, sorry. Here, Klaus. I pronounce your name correctly. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's fine. It's a complicated name to pronounce in English. So, Maurice, Mauricio, Salavoy, it's all fine. Okay. Okay, Maurice. Okay. Thanks. We have Klaus as well from Nokia. Yeah. Hi, Klaus. Hi, Klaus. I think he's muted on his end. Yeah. Yeah. Quite right. I muted. <laughs> I was muted. <laughs> Sorry for that. Hi. Hi, Klaus. So, would you like to put your name there um, on the you know, in the meeting minutes. Shall I, my, myself? Oh. Yeah, you can put the... I hope. Uh, let me see whether I spell your name. Not race. Okay. And then Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Across? Yes. Sure, across? Are you, is, is this your first time to join the meeting? Uh, I was there also last time, last week. Yep. Oh, last week? Uh, oh, yeah, okay, 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 I see, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll just... Hi, Tihomia. Hi, Tihomia. Hello. Hi, Tiho. Hi, Georgian. Uh, sorry, I don't. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yes, hi, it's Jorgen. Jorgen, okay, Jorgen. Um, could, would you mind um, typing your company name? I can type it for you. Which company are you with? Sure, I'm at Pivotal VMware. Oh, VMware, okay. I have the doc I can type as well. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I already, okay, yeah, you can correct it. I, I tapped it. There's a holiday in the US today. Maybe that's why some people might not be able to join. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. Um, okay, I, I think we can start um, because, uh, as you said, it might be a holiday. Um, so original, I think I put the, um, so first maybe the question time. Any person would like to have any questions before we go to the topic discussion? 
Yeah, maybe last time we talked a lot about KubeCon uh, contributions from, from this work group. So has there been any final decision on that? How many people and uh, if and what topic? That's a good question. I, I think uh, last time, uh, I think we decided just one person um, and then it's Tihoma, Tihomia. Um, then the topic to discuss, we haven't really discussed that yet. Um, we can discuss that. Um, I'm not sure, Tihomia, have you, uh, maybe in the next meeting? I can do it now if you guys want. We can start talking about it and I'd love to get people's yep. opinions early. But just also, to kind of, oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll also, start. no, just, no, no, Tihomia, yeah, yeah, just continue, please. But you mentioned last time that you have already like a slide deck. Maybe we can share that as well, like put a link here so we can access that. That might be a good idea, like, or maybe like a starting point. Uh, hello? Yeah, I, I'll do that. But uh, my, my decks are currently kind of specific a little bit at least I have a footer for other conferences that I've done so I just have to update it to kind of remove that and remove some of the slides that are not needed for our you know our stuff but yeah I'll I'll, I'll do it and I'll post it on the channel and, and, and everybody can look at it and, and you know yeah okay thanks very much And you mentioned you also had a demo that um, you can show. Maybe that's something to, that we could have a look at during one of these meetings. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was hoping maybe today, if you guys feel like it, it's your decision really. Um, so yeah, it's up to you guys. I think it's a good starting point, not because I want to speak or I want to do anything. It's just because I think for even people that are getting involved, their last meeting kind of took off with different agendas. And this is a good kind of starting point for new people getting involved to see why or what or who or start raising questions. Um, so if you guys agree, I can do it now. If you guys want it in the next meetings, I'm fine with that as well. So just let me know what to do. I would love to see it, yes. I think that it's also it's going to bring context for the pull request discussion, right? Yeah, uh, regarding the event state, Kathy, I just wanted to let you know, maybe you've seen already, I've closed that pull request with like 5 billion comments on there. I've taken all those comments in consideration and I've uh, raised a new pull request, which with uh, even uh, two examples, which cover the two examples that you are, have mentioned in the comments, Kathy. So those should be covered. And I'd really, so far I got some uh, comments from Doug, uh, but if you guys wanna start looking at the PR and, and uh, providing more comments, I would like that as well. Okay, okay, sounds good. So I think, you know, um, yeah, for these two topics, probably we can take it off because this was originally regarding uh, PR, uh, I think the homeless PR but since he has closed that and then created a new one. So we can probably start to um, look, at the, look at the new ones, you know. Um, um, so what is that? P so would you mind to post that new PR here? I think this PR is closed, right? Um, Tihomia, is that right? Yeah, I closed it because uh, uh, after all the comments, there had to be some changes done and it was just easier to do um, a new one. But where is chat? I I'm sorry, I'm not good with Zoom at all. So you guys have oh, to. Okay. So here, it, here it is, 162. 162. Okay. So you are not. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to replace this PR maybe with a new one. So you say you have a new one, right? Um, you yeah, know how that, to post that link? You just copy the link? I did in chat, top. I just posted it. If you can see it in the chat section. Oh, in the chat? Okay, let me see. Yeah. <laughs> let 
Oh, no, I'm it? sorry, I did it in Zoom it's chat. It's okay. Let me find my chat window. Oh, let me see. Where is that chat window? I saw it. Oh, here. Okay. Oh, where's my chat window? I do not know. Okay, I'm not as good at this. Oh, oh here. Okay, got it now. Okay, so. Uh, let me post it here. So let's see. So of course, you know, I, I don't think we can, um, I think probably it's good to everyone, you know, at least, uh, go offline and review this PR. Um, so the, so how about the, I think you know Tihomia, I haven't gone through the PR yet. So this PR we're going to support and or right? Both and and and, and yes, or. yes, it, it it removes the string expression like what we talked about, but in addition to complement all the comments, it does support uh exclusive and uh and parallel, so or and and yes. But not mix, uh, right? But not mix only either and events or, or events. Is that right? Um, or you yes, you have to define or? Um, the event state has to act uh, once you declare you, you, you do it kind of like a gateway, either it's exclusive, so uh, one of the branches uh, will trigger or it's parallel where in your case that's an uh, and which uh, all of the events must be uh, present in order for uh, actions to to execute and there is also a difference between if event state is a starting state which means it triggers instantiation of the workflow or if it's an intermediate state um, which is you know it's 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 a transition from another state so a workflow uh, instance already uh, exists so all that is covered I put examples I put images and so it's much more in detail and more understandable, I think, than the original one that apparently creates a lot of confusion. So yeah, take a look at it now, um, and then then and whenever you have time, and then let, and then put some comments on there. I'll see where we go from there. Okay. I, I I do want to link one more in the chat if you guys don't mind. That I think it's important, which is the 160, uh, uh, because. It updates the specification use cases. And I would love to get comments on that as well, because I think the use cases is one of the first things that people look at. And the ones that were there before, they were okay, but they were more like examples rather than specific serverless use cases. So, uh, you know, I updated those, I added four or five new ones. And if you have any more ideas, uh, either put them in comments of the PR or, or feel free to do your own PR with adding more use cases, that'd be great as well. So yeah, if, you, if, if we can maybe discuss the 160 as well at some point during a meeting, that would be nice as well. Okay, okay. Um, so, okay, then since we turned that, um, I think that we discussed that. Uh, would you like to like to help, uh, do the demo or would you like to discuss this issue like well, okay. yeah i mean I, I i have no clue how to share my screen on this thing and I, i'm logged in twice because my microphone doesn't work on my laptop so if you can give me permissions this is like t sordilovich <laughs> that's my username on the laptop um, uh, so in your laptop you will have uh, the share button right Right below the like, besides the chat button, you have the share button as well. I think oh, it says you cannot start screen sharing while the other participant is sharing. Yeah, okay. probably Kathy needs to. So needs yeah, to, I can yeah. stop sharing and then you know. Uh, but I just wonder whether um, would you like to discuss this issue? We use state, stage, or step. What has maybe we can discuss this time? Okay, I'll stop sharing then. Then you can share, Tihoma. Okay, <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> so, 
Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yay. yes. Hello. Hello, my screen. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is kind of start off if I was new to this. And, and I don't want this to be a monologue. Please, please, guys, stop me at any time. Tell me I'm crazy or whatever and ask questions. I'm, I don't want, this is not a speech. Okay. But what I've done so far, go ahead, is I have given a couple of presentations on this already and I wanted to show a short demo and I don't want to go through the slide deck as I will share it. But I want to show you a general approach because we have some of like big names usually in these meetings and you guys give presentations as well. And maybe you're planning to do a presentation on this within your own company or for some public events, I don't know. Uh, I wanted to share you some of the key concepts of this that I have been presenting to new people uh, and kind of get your input on it or give you ideas um, what you can present as well if you're you know, talking about this to whoever. Um, I usually just give a small introduction to serverless. Uh, that's kind of all of you guys know, but and you will see why pay for value, and, 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 and this is something that I want to show the slide on because the pay for value for workflows in several of this environment is different than functions. And I want to, I, I kind of emphasize that a lot and you will see why, and it's my dog barks, I'm sorry. Uh, so we just say, hey, we, we, I showed this example and I will make this big. Uh, the way I show why serverless workflows is important is by showing a function, a serverless function. And this is just an example of a C-sharp function. And what I say to people is, look, what is the serverless workflow is supposed to, uh, you know, workflows do in general, is offload the business orchestration and allows you to do in your functions and your code that you deploy and runs on serverless environments to really focus on business logic. But if you look at a lot of these functions, you do everything else but business logic. And in this case, I'll show quickly that, look, this is a function that gets deployed on Microsoft Azure or whatever. I'm not trying to bash Microsoft here, please don't either. But it's a good example to show that you have a definition of an event, in, in this case, a timer trigger. You have to configure the cron job. You have to configure your services that you're going to call. You have a control flow logic in the await statement. Do we do something in parallel? Do we uh, do it synchronously, asynchronously? Then you have, again, control flow logic in the for each loop that goes through some list of to-do items and and completes the ones that uh, deletes the ones that have been completed so if you look at the serverless function you have you don't actually do any business logic in here the only thing that does business logic is some other service so this is kind of where i go into showing that why workflows are even important in this environment just like they are in others um, then the other slide i wanted to show is the most important thing about using workflows and things that I think is important, and you'll see why, is this thing in red, flow control patterns. Uh, as we all know, and we have some big guns in here that have been around workflows for decades, uh, for, uh, we have developed many, many workflow patterns uh, for control flow logic, for data access, for error handling, you name it, there is hundreds of them. Even for a simple, fork and join, there is over 40 of them. But why is that important in serverless environment is because of the cost. If you see AWS, and please stop me and ask any question, if you, if you look at AWS uh, pattern of billing people for workflows, they bill them per transition. And I'm pretty sure that everybody else is going to follow a similar pattern of billing. Uh, having a serverless workflow in place does not mean the cost is going to be reduced because now you have your cost of functions and workflows. But where control flow patterns and why this workflow stuff is so important for serverless specifically is the cost itself. And you see here an example that introducing si a simple control flow pattern like a, like a fork can seriously reduce your cost of deploying this stuff in serverless environments. So in case we can say step two, in this case, that, that does nothing, 
uh, can be avoided. This particular transition on the right-hand side, you see in the red, we don't have to pay for it. So whatever we do going forward as far as pull requests um, uh, goes, as far as changes of what we do, have in mind uh, that this cost pattern. The same thing is really with uh, another thing is scaling. If we go back to here, uh, things like event uh, states that actually trigger workflow instantiation. Uh, we have to have the ability, such as, for example, this referencing something else rather than using some sort of string pattern is, is, is to scale. So our service work will have to scale, be able to scale to zero in wait states uh, and then continue. So a lot of the work that I'm, I think I will be doing in the near future and, and, and everybody else hopefully can get, get, give input and also work on this is, is, is really be able to define these weight states and how to scale the workflow to zero, how to continue using correlation token, task tokens, things like that. And somebody might have a lot more idea about this than me currently and, and, and we can collaborate on that. So please be aware of this cost, right? Uh, as far as who's out there, I put all these images. You can tell me to remove you or something, but there is a lot of this, of this stuff going on right now. Every month there is, like I said, a new workflow popping up. Uh, and why are we important in this space is because we provide a standard. And like I said before, if we don't do it, somebody else will. This is not something that it's a, it's a what I want to say is it's a pretty hot topic right now. Uh, because mostly of the cost, because I don't think people have figured this one out yet. Uh, Tell me. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that interrupt. But uh, is this is um, is it uh, on purpose that you don't talk about Amazon in this uh, view graph? You want to talk about uh, the the big guns here, but the Amazon is missing. Is oh, sorry, here. I didn't see it. Oh, Corey. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, thanks. No, sorry. I should maybe put Amazon to make sure, yeah, sorry, it's... the image is probably not clear. But that's kind of like the main point. And, and then we, 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 look, we say, you know, basically I'm trying to say, you have all these different workflows. Uh, they all use JSON, they all use YAML, they all use whatever. But at the end, they're not proprietary, they're not portable, they're not vendor neutral. And you are basically vendor stuck once you pick a solution within you know, your company or, or, or whatever you're doing. And that's kind of the value of serverless workflow group and serverless workflow specification. Um, it, that's it. And I, I kind of go into, you know, what it is uh, you will see during the demo. And I really want to emphasize about human readability. I think that's another big, from what I've been asking, I've been asked questions during those meetings. A lot of people are, long-term BPM and two users, and I don't want to get into any wars with that or because I, I have been around BPM and two myself for a very long time. So that's real, irrelevant to me, but human readability was a big thing. And I just go through uh, different things like the states uh, the, that we have, the branching and stuff like that. At the end, I show a demo. So this is kind of like the, 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 the presentation that I have. Uh, I'll post it once I remove the, the, the footer and some of the stuff regarding the redhead specific that's, that's here, kind of like I removed that as well. Uh, and then you guys can, can, can add to it or, or, or give comments or whatever. But I, <laughs> and that's it for the slides. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but I did want to show kind of like the demo part. Oh, what have I done now? Let's see. All right, so where the, oh, let me see. One second, I want to see something real quick. No. All right, so I have this all started. Okay, good. Um, all right, so let's see this bad boy in action. Let me just delete my test that I did yesterday. But what I have here, you don't have to be a developer to understand I have a simple Maven project. It has no Java classes. It just has resources, which are some JSON files. In this case, uh, our serverless workflows, 
as the specification defined can be either represented in JSON format or YAML, which we added recently, either is fine. Uh, because I, I think Alibaba uses YAML specifically. We have to kind of, you know, cater to both sides of the markups, um, which is fine. Now, let, uh, this is just an implementation which we have at Red Hat. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to say anything. But you don't have to have any Java classes. You don't have to have any setup. You just create a project. Uh, it's running on this thing called Quarkus, uh, which you can read about as well. But uh, we're just going to create a greeting uh, dot sw dot json is our ext extension. You, our implementations can use a different extension because we don't want to, we have a, a hot reload feature. We don't want a hot reload on every single JSON file because it might not be a serverless workflow. So we do sw.json. And let me see if I can get in presentation mode. All right. So you've seen the specification, you've seen all this crazy documentation, but now let's see what the heck this actually looks like. Uh, of course, we are representing our workflows with JSON, so it's a JSON object. Every workflow has, should have an ID, and let's call it greet. All right, we're doing a simple greeting, hello, somebody workflow. Uh, a workflow already has a name. Uh, and of course, we have to have a start state, okay? So this is the starts at property, so let's say, greet person, all right? Now, another thing that we have to do is, oh yeah, and also we can specify a version. It doesn't matter really. So you can version your workflows and also if you, you, you know, update it and stuff like that. The next thing we're gonna do is we have these things called functions. Now, these are the serverless functions that we can invoke. Uh, we have done this in our specification, which is a change, for example, to AWS. And I think this is an upgrade that we have reusable definition of functions. We have a lot of different states like operation states, event states, stuff like that. They can have actions and actions can call a function. In AWS, for example, or other ones, you have to redefine your functions over and over again in each action. We have this uh, little bit ability to define a reusable function, all right? And let's give it a uh, system out function you can give it a type or a resource now in my implementation because i my internet is flaky i don't want to actually call a serverless function i'm just gonna i have a, a sys out type this is just gonna print stuff out so this is a definition of a function now that can be reused throughout the workflow states all right and now of course we have to have our states <laughs> all right so we have many different states and each state has a name. Now let's call it the same as what we said the starting point or the start state of our workflow is. Uh, we have different state types. As you can see, these are the current types that we have. All right, we can add more if we need to. Uh, but what I'm using right here is VS Code, it's just an editor. And because our specification has a very specific JSON schema definition, uh, we can write simple tooling to do stuff like this, all right? So it but basically fills you all the options that our JSON schema defines, which is another, what I have to say, addition to what uh, the AWS state language has. They don't have a JSON definition for this, we do. And I created a small little VS Code extension um, that helps me with this. So let's do a simple operation state. If you guys remember, operation state is just a state that executes actions, okay? Um, an operation state can have an action mode. Let's call it sequential. And an action state can have actions. Oops, uh, I'm dumb. Actions, all right, so now we have our actions. Another thing, before we define our actions, uh, we're just doing, uh, uh, in our serverless workflow, we don't have an explicit end state. We can just say end, and there are different types of ends. Uh, our type can be an error. So our workflow says, I, uh, <laughs> our, my execution has failed, they notify other workflows or other services. We can send a message. In this case, we send a cloud event out at the end of our 
uh, execution of the workflow. In this case, I have a signal which makes uh, sense for our implementation, but it doesn't make sense for the workflow. But it, uh, terminate is a hard end. So when we execute all our actions in this state, we're just going to terminate the execution of our workflow instance. So far, so good, guys. No. Good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, All right. Makes sense. No, please stop me. But 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 as you see right now, I'm, uh, this is all human readable so far. I'm just explaining it as you go because it might be the first time for some people to see this. Um, and next time I won't bother with this anymore. But now let's finish this and see it running, and then we'll go from there. Now let's create an action. An action has. Uh, reference to our function. And this is something we've added as far as reusable functions go. So I can say, uh, I am going to, whoops, uh, reference my system out function, but of course I can pass it my own parameters. All right, now parameter is just an object. It can have string keys and string values. Uh, in this case, we can have, I think this one takes a prefix of hello, we're just gonna greet somebody, and a message parameter. Uh, and this is something that's kind of confusing. Uh, I think to some people mentioned this, but it is data, uh, uh, workflow data. When we start our workflow, we will give it some JSON, which is the workflow data that starts. Uh, this workflow data is then going to be passed as the data input to the starting state. In this case, our greeting person state. Uh, at this point, it is available to the state and we can reference it, okay? We, don't, we, we can also filter it and th th that's where the state filters and all the different filters come in that I'm not gonna uh, talk about now. But let's say we just want to, and we reference with a dollar sign and we just want to say hello first name. And this is really a, it. At this point, our workflow is um, executable. Uh, we, we can see that it is 28 lines of code. If we did YAML, it would probably be 15. I don't know. Um, and this, uh, just to show you the execution of that, where am I? Uh, I'm just going to start Quarkus. This is the uh, is going to our implementation in Red Hat. It looks at the workflow. It's going to compile it into some internal API that nobody cares about, and make it executable. Now, the cool thing about implementations, the one thing you have to understand, is how our workflows instantiated. We have things like CLI. We have things like that, but in most cases, in the real life environment, it's going to be actually. Uh, instantiated via for probably a, some REST API, either some service or something. What we have, we generate a REST API in case of us for things like the workflow instance, any event state, which is a wait state, things like that. And in this case, we have our greet. Is this the, uh, let me just double check. Yeah, greet, so the ID is greet. So we have generated, uh, REST API, REST endpoint for greet. We're just gonna try it out. We're just gonna say, all right. So what I'm doing now is I'm sending JSON to this REST endpoint called greet, passing in first name is my name. Uh, and we, we should create an instance of this workflow. And here I am, our workflow got executed and I got hello Tiku, okay. Now, one cool thing about serverless workflows that I just usually show in meetings is that we, have, we don't have to restart our applications and stuff like that. So it's very easy to, for example, add another state. So let's add, whoops, that's not a state. Let's add another state. Um, all right, and then I'll get to the, to the good stuff. Don't worry, well, what have I done here? Okay, I can't even cut and paste right. All right, so let's say add another operation state. Now instead of end here, we're gonna have, let me just do presentation mode. Instead of end, we're going to have a transition. Our transition is going to have a next state of send off person, let's say. 
uh, and we're going to transition to another operation state, which has the same function, but we here say goodbye. And that's it. We can send another REST endpoint request to this to start a workflow instance. And here we are, we are with goodbye. So this is the basic kind of hello world example that you can show to people. It takes seriously like three minutes to code and actually run uh, depending on your implementation. Now to some of the better stuff to actually show people here is I have some other examples and because they're a little longer, I don't type them out myself, but I have them. But as you can see, they're only 40 lines long. In this case, what we have is use of event state. And this is why kind of event state is important. Uh, in this case, what we want to do is have uh, a workflow get instantiated on a cloud event um, coming through a Kafka pipe. And also at the end of the workflow, you want to produce a cloud event, which is going to trigger our uh, other workflow. So this is kind of like an inter-workflow uh, messaging based art, uh, orchestration. Uh, where our workflows can consume events via the starting event state or in a, in intermediate event state is fine as well. But at the same time, when our workflow is completed, we have the option to produce a cloud event, which then other services or other workflows can react to. <clears throat> and in this case, I just wanted to show you, we also have reusable, let me do presentation mode. Um, we have also just like functions we have reusable events in this case we have two events defined one is the customer arrives event uh, which is a comes from our kafka stream that is defined and while workflow completes we have a customer departs event which also you know is a, is a kafka based event uh, we have the same type of function which is our system out but in this case instead of reacting to or getting extension we are rest api passing in some JSON, our workflow is going to be triggered by an actual cloud event coming through a Kafka uh, stream. So this is the same type of state, which just says hello. And at the end, the only thing that's uh, different is our end, instead of being type terminate, we have a type message and we reference an event that we have defined here, which needs to be produced, passing it in some information, okay? now this produced customer departs event is going to be then consumed by our departure workflow uh which just says goodbye so it's the same type of thing that we just showed within our greeting workflow but instead of rest api and json we are reacting to messages so let's kind of see how that uh, ends up we have i have my zookeeper running i have my kafka locally running here I just have to create, uh, now I am connecting, this is a console producer, this allows me to send messages to my Kafka topic. And because our workflow here, arrival has a topic defined of arrival, I'm going to, as you can see here, there is an arrival topic that I'm going to send my cloud event to. Now I don't have to send all the stuff from the cloud event, or the ID, the timestamp, what I'm going to do is just send the data. Uh, and in this case, let's uh, Sala boy. Okay. And this is uh, actual cloud event format. The only thing I'm doing is, is sending the data section, which is the payload of the event. Now, when I send that event, if you can see, we said hello, Sala boy, that came from our arrival, which reacted to the arrival message. If you can see now, our arrival workflow at the end has sent, I'm sorry, our customer departs event, which you can, can see here. This is this part, particular message, which then got consumed by our, our other workflow and which printed out goodbye, Salaboy. Um, so this, is, this example is more of kind of like to get people's interest in in more than just hello world use cases, but also kind of uh, show our event state a little more. Um, and that's all I have. Can I ask you a question, Tihomi? Who is creating like the cloud event there? Like, because you have like a Kafka, a Kafka consumer, right? 
but who is in charge of creating the event when you send the data? Or there's um, no like, cloud event there? It is actually, uh, well, this is implementation specific. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, but within um, the, the runtime that we have for this, we enforce cloud events 100%. So you actually like have to send a cloud event format we use the cloud event uh, a, a Java API to convert that message into a cloud event uh, object and then consume it. It's payload. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah. So I don't know how to stop sharing anymore. Uh, yeah. You have probably a button on top now on the on the on the okay. top bar. Yeah stop share yay okay so that's all i had i mean i hope you, it didn't bore you too much but it showed a little bit uh, but that's kind of like the thing that 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 we are doing here um that's what we're yeah. doing within this specification hey, uh, about uh, the, just uh, a dumb uh, question from my side oh, sorry no go ahead what first. would it would it be possible to make um, the usage of cloud events more more visible in this demo it, like a look under the hood yeah i think yeah i mean i can i can try but definitely yeah this right now it's kind of hidden by only just sending it to a kafka uh, topic yeah, I, 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 yeah I, i'll try i'll try maybe just as, as an idea i mean it's just a proposal yeah, no, definitely. If you have any ideas, I'd love to use them. Hey, Jimmy, uh, thanks for the demo. Uh, it's really, really nice to see this running. Um, while you were presenting the second, the more complex scenario, I was thinking about this events uh, definition at the beginning of the workflow. How would your workflow, would you also subscribe to the departure topic? that happening underneath sorry i didn't understand it's your your events definition um has both the arrival topic in kafka and the departure topic as a kafka event type without specifying whether that is an input a subscribe to topic or whether that is a published to topic so oh, it, I see. No, I mean, you need to subscribe to both, or how? Um, if if uh, if uh, well, within the events, they don't uh, specify our event definitions are global, where it's just an event definition. Uh, it's reusable, something being reused yeah. in the states. Okay. Uh, if uh, 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 well, the events can be either consumed or produced by the workload. They can. The only way a workload can produce currently in our specification and a cloud event is in the end state. Is 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 when the workload finishes execute. Uh, that's the current way. If there is other ways that we should be doing it, I'm all ears for it. Uh, the only way to consume is um, via event states currently. So there is no, no specific thing like saying I am producing or I'm consuming. You kind of have to look at where the event is used within the workflow uh, states currently. The, this end um, semantics of saying emit a message to me seems like a collapsed version of transitioning to a state that would submit a message, right? So uh, an event. Maybe we'd call it better call it event, not message, because it's a. So yeah, I mean, is it is it do you uh, just submit any message to a Kafka topic, or do you actually uh, encapsulate it as a cloud event? Yes, I mean so. both. Uh, when the event is produced, it's first converted into cloud event JSON format. So it uses yes. cloud event SDK Swift binding and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't necessarily use the SDK because this JSON format is so simple. We created a very simple version of that currently, but yeah, definitely we should use the SDK probably. Okay. I like that point, Manuel, because that's, yeah, some other languages, they usually close the execution with sending an event, which it might be internal or external. So yeah, it's a good point there. I, I see the benefit now with the demo or typing all the, the workflow definition, I see the benefit of collapsing this into a more abstract notion of, okay, end this date with sending a message. 
So to spare the developer well, from in, defining an extra state that is just for the purpose of sending, emitting the event. But the message and the event, they should be the same, right? Or it's, it's a little bit different. I mean, is there any difference between those two things? Well, I mean, this is kind of borrowed from, you know, business process man, BPMN2, where you have different types of event states. I mean, end states, right? You have a, you have a end event, you have a message end event, signal end event, things like that. And we can borrow, this is like the whole point of us, what we're doing, our benefit towards other workflow, like even AWS is because we have a lot of minds here that have been seeing different types of workflows implementation. So the more we can borrow from our experience and, 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 and our good uh, experiences, it's good. So, but it's not, it's not possible to emit an event and continue the workflow because it's either terminating. Currently, or... no. Uh, we, when there is such thing in BPMN2, for example, in intermediate events where you can send messages and consume, if you guys would like to add that, uh, this is why I'm doing this, to give you guys ideas for pull requests and, and, and issues and stuff like that, because the, we can add a lot of, yes, we can add that if needed. Yeah, I don't really want to press too much on, on adding stuff. Um, so if, if when there are people using it actively, I think this is uh, where most of the, because I, I'm not a developer that has built an application based on the current workflow specification, nor do we have a product on it. Um, so I am hesitating to just propose stuff uh, for completeness of functionality purpose or whatever, and then just just troubles every uh, development. No, like the don't feel existing. like that. Wouldn't feel but like I feel, that. I, I feel about it more like Legos. Yeah. Like uh, if I want to be able to emit an event currently, I the only way possible is to implement it as part of my function implementation. Um, with the termination with an event, yes, but I can only terminate with an event. I cannot emit an event and then continue the workflow. So I was thinking about any way to, to implement so that. So you have the event state, right? And the event state, it's not yet emitting, right? It's just consuming. That kind of thing, that, that was my point in one of the pull requests about like, okay, let's consume, catch, and throw as well events, which is sending sending and receiving events from the workflow control. I think that that might be useful. Yes, and the send receive would um, also touch on the borders of the workflow extent, right? So you can, we have this longer discussion about consuming events, but I think it's the, the same with creating events. Would they be carrying the same correlation ID? Would that be stripped off? Is that part of the workflow? Or how, how do you currently manage? So, well, the, the way we have it defined in the specification is two ways, okay? One is starting a workflow instance where you don't have a correlation key. And that is, I think, what a lot of the comments were in the JIRA, like the you know, 50 common JIRA. Uh, at that point, we have uh, a token um, that you can or cannot use. Uh, uh, once a workflow instance is started, the idea that is within implementation that you have a correlation key. You might have multiple correlation keys. One is for the workflow instance yourself, what AWS is doing, they also have a specific task correlation key so they can start the workflow instance back up once it's scaled to zero on a specific task or a wait state that uh, the workflow where it's scaled to zero. So I don't know, we have to define that, but currently uh, if you have an event state that's not a starting state and you want to consume events, they have to include a correlation key so they're associated with that particular instance of the workflow. If they don't, then they might start a new instance um, or cannot be correlated to that particular one that you've started. Right. Um, sorry, I was late. I missed uh, a potential earlier discussion about this. Did you already talk about correlating multiple events? No. no. Okay. Um, do you want to discuss the current pull request that I think you last updated three days ago or? 
I have just um, one one notice. I, I I noticed the and and or and still um, I wanted to ask Casey actually. Um, and if you we can do it through um, GitHub issues, but my question is when we do get two events like we need to and and or we need to um, get that boolean expression right the first event has happened who keeps the state about that event having happened already like uh, would uh -huh. you think that this is kept somewhere outside or is this something that the like, the workflow execution system would somehow need to keep that state that the previous one has already happened and then yes. i do not see when i can actually get rid of that state so so okay so here's my thought so if there are, um the workflow requires two events right you say these two events are n right so the first event comes it's a workflow engine okay or the whatever you call it the back end workflow back end implementation that needs to keep track of you know which events has been received for example event a has been received yeah. it keep track of it and then it wait for the uh, next event and then of course we have a timeout right for the two events as a whole right so if within that timeout period the second event has not been received and then you know there should be a um, uh, specification say when that times out was uh, what action we should do or what which transition we should go I think currently the spec is transitioned to the end state but we can extend it say if you know these events are not received we can transition to another state we, we can extend it to provide more options a current spec I just say okay if that event is not I mean if not all events are received we should transition to the end state does okay, that so that is when I uh, when I transition out of the event state, which would be because of a timeout or because it has been completed, then I can actually get rid of the state because it's no longer needed. Okay, and then the other, right. yeah, um, okay, yeah, maybe let's take these discussions to the uh, issues and pull requests. That's okay. But oh, thanks, yeah, actually, thanks, yeah. original description, the spec has description on that. We can probably add that back. So I know now that description is removed, so people are confused about what happens if the events are not received. Um, I did that. Yeah, yeah, really take a look at the pull request because it should cover everything now that we discussed in those comments. I hope if not anything is missed, you guys will let me know. Okay. So Manu, uh, I think you know you raised a good point about the you mentioned the the event produce the uh, event produce and the end state, right? So I, I didn't quite get your um what's what your point. So what you would like to see? What's your um what's your thought on this? Uh, currently, the workflow cannot emit an event and then continue. Okay, so you would like the workflow to emit an event and then can continue to another state, right? Yes. Okay, so that means you know this event producer, this event emit can ha happen on any intermediate state right in any in, at any intermediate state right yes okay i see yeah i think you know we can think about that um, yeah but, but do, we, do we need a new state or do we need like an internal kind of like operation of the existing states to do that i mean my my original thought was like okay that, that's a different state that it's going to emit the event in the same way that we have like receive event but I think, you know, okay, yeah, so so we can discuss about that. Uh, I think the first thing, if we want every state, uh, if we can, we, if we would like uh, every state to uh, be able to emit an event, I think the first thing we, we, we should do is to change the end flag to an end state. I think, Tihomia, you mentioned that you are going to change it, right? Change it back, right, to the end state. Is that what you, have you done that or? Mm, no, we had originally we had an explicit end state which we changed to the end uh, definition that each state can declare itself to be an end state and with this this is still okay uh, there is probably no need for that well, I think what's being asked is 
is to create possibly a new state called the like a event producer state or whatever we end up calling it which is an intermediate state that can produce the event um, if cloud event if needed um, that's a good point i think if we should probably add one just to have one uh, but yeah i don't know yeah, yeah, I think, you know, we can either have an explicit event produce state or we can um, add that producer into any, allow that producer to be specified in any of the existing state. Um, um, so we will have two ways uh, of doing that. Or, uh, th yeah, there's many ways, you're right. Either somehow the Avery state should be able to produce an event, but I don't think states like uh what we have some states should not probably do it like parallel states should like probably choice. not do it yeah choice states should probably not do it uh pass through states should not do it i mean there are some states that really i mean maybe we'll make it part of the actions such as just like a function execution could be a specific action that produces an event so states that can execute actions can also do that Maybe that's a good uh, idea, or just have a dedicated state for it. Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't think about uh, it. Yeah. Not, yeah, I don't know yet what's best. Yeah, we can discuss about that. You know, no matter whether we have a dedicated state or we even have, we have a dedicated state, right? Like you said, some states will not be. We should not not allow it to produce an event. Then those states cannot transition to that dedicated event producer state. So I think that part of the uh, logic, no matter how we define, it, it's still there. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's that's we we need to discuss. You know, which state should not have uh, should not be involved or event producer. So that's one thing. Another thing is yeah. how we should define whether we define inside that state in the action or we have a dedicated producer state. Um, and another thing yeah. I'm thinking yeah, about yeah. is that we should have that end state because I'm just feeling maybe in the future we're going to add more information. We need to extend that end to have more functionality. So I think it, uh, explicit yeah, I mean, it is clear. Like, you know, in your example, I see that you show, right? You have to change this end slide. But if you have an end state there, you do not need to change that. You just add a new state, that end state does not need to be changed. Otherwise, um, it's just my thought, you know. Yeah, I've, 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 te I've tested. Uh, so far, my testing has shown that adding explicit end states adds on the bigger workloads can add probably hundreds of lines of JSON code. In addition, the extension to ending, uh, I think what we should think about, and this is just my thought, is, is just like transitions, ending a workflow can add more rules such as authentication rules such as user like not that anybody can end the workflow not that. so there's a lot of more stuff that we can you add even to transitions for example can I transition from state a to b unless i'm a specific user type or i have a specific role or a group that's one thing that our specification as far as authentication goes uh, does not cover at all currently there's a lot of stuff we can improve on but right now, unless there is a specific need, I keep it like this until we find out, hey, we really need to add it back or something like that. But I mean, yeah, so yeah. Uh, right now, as far as end states being a generic end state before where it could be reused, yes, we can have one and all of our states can transition to it. But as soon as we start introducing states, some can produce messages. In some case, we want to produce an error. In some case, we want to do this then having the way we have them right now, it's probably a little better. But again, it's not set in stone. We can always update if needed. Was yeah. that a okay. recent pull request that came through this change of the event, the end state? Sorry, yeah, what's your I, question again? Faku, what's your question? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. The, this uh, change from end state um, to having the end um, kind of as an event anywhere, was that a recent pull request? I didn't see that flying by. Yeah, it was maybe the last month. Okay. Okay. So what's your point? So, Falco, you, you, you like end state or you like the 
uh, uh, and the parameter, uh, I mean, parameter or definition, something like that. I think I'm tempted more towards an end stage. Um, I'm, I find it difficult if uh, certain behaviors are allowed somewhere and somewhere not. So how similar to how we discussed intermediate events, would it make sense, for example, for a parallel state to be in, to, to define an end or a choice to define an end? Yeah, okay. So you prefer end state, okay. I think we are, we're running out of time today. So it's already just one more minute. So I think uh, I just want to remind, you know, people who join later, you know, please add your name to the, um, to the meeting, um, meeting minutes. Um, yeah, uh, and then the next we meet will be in March. So if you have any topic you would like to discuss, just post it in that uh, meeting minutes in the agenda. Sounds good? Cool. That's great. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think, thanks everyone. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thanks again for the demo. Yeah. Yes, it was very, nice very demo. nice. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.